It was a sight to see across the skies of central Illinois this past weekend, and I'm here in the Weather Center now with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Jacob, we're talking about a different kind of weather right now, some solar, space outer space weather. kind of weather. Yeah, it's uh, space weather. You know, anytime there's something science, they come to us here in the building. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. Did you get a chance to see them? I tried. I tried multiple times. I don't know if just the too many trees. I live in Urbana, you, you so. You patient enough. That's probably what happened. That's probably true. Yeah, so. You have to be really patient <laughs> for these northern lights here. Uh, we got a question. We got a lot of We do. We have, I mean, right? stuff like this demands questions. So yeah. the, the question that we have is, how do the northern lights happen? And how do you predict them? Well, I cover my eyes and I kind of point at the, you know, uh, here, they'll be there. No, <laughs> um, there's actually a certain index. And the way I like to describe it is we're going to set the table for dinner, but we'll see if it shows up. You know, you set the dinner of the table, is the kid going to come or is he late at practice? You don't really know what's going to happen. Same thing with the Northern Lights. We're going to set the table for him. So uh, I got this here. Um, as you watch, what we use is something called the KP index. This is basically a measure of the amount of disturbance to the Earth's magnetic field. Typically, when we look here, when you're looking three, four, five, that's a decent number for us. It's usually pretty low. The disturbance comes from a solar flare. Mm. When that happens, it comes our way. Sometimes we see that number bump up. Now, as we look closer... Now, when you're saying solar flare, you mean like from the sun? Yeah, yeah. That solar flare comes from the sun, travels through space. You look closer here. We're kind of hidden behind there. You can see Ryan. I, I disappeared. Uh, those numbers, they, as they get higher, it's a scale zero to nine. When you get to seven, eight, nine, that means the northern lights could end up overhead. The table is set for them. Do they show up? We don't really know that, uh, but we keep an eye on that. There's some other features that give us a little bit of cues, a little bit of a clue that they might make an appearance. Uh, and we had those clues on Friday night and then again Saturday and Sunday night this past week. And we saw Friday night, Northern Lights were directly overhead here. So we'll push that away, get rid of that. Um, and uh, some of those Northern Light photos were really impressive. I was going to say, I may have not seen it in person, but the pictures were just they look like they were out of National Geographic. Right. Uh, they were pretty great. Okay, so this is another look at that scale, zero to nine. We're talking zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, we got to get high up in this space weather forecast scale here. And it talks about some of the impacts as well. You see here, if you get to G5, the extreme storm level, that's what we were forecasting. Uh, the Northern Lights, there were visual sights with the naked eye and that G5 level. The Caribbean, Mexico, Florida. Hawaii, all 50 states had those northern light photos. And that affects there. the color, or how uh, does it's that? Just, it's the distance, how far away from the poles oh, they get. Okay. Uh, and so as we look at that here, uh, another way to look at it, how the auroras form. So here's my sun over here on the side. Oh. If we get a solar flare that comes in, well, the Earth has a magnetic field that protects us. That energy is going to be distributed around the field. It follows the Earth's magnetic field. So typically, you see it more at the poles. Right. On those bigger events, though, the magnetic field gets more disturbed, and you see more of that. How about the colors? We have a lot of photos with colors as well. Yep. Uh, depending on what type of molecules and what height they are, it tells us the colors here. So the red ones, over 200 kilometers up, hitting oxygen molecules. Blue ones, pretty high up, nitrogen. And then green is 100 to 200 kilometers up, oxygen. And pink is nitrogen. Let's run through some of these photos real quick. That's here. amazing. Look yeah. at that. That's, I see, that's the color I saw in a lot of the photos from around here. Yeah, we had a lot of really good colors. We had a lot of reds show up too, which red is wow. one of the more rare ones for us. Uh, but we'll kind of scroll through these photos fairly quickly here we got all kinds of photos on our website well we're almost out of time but i do have to get one more question sure. over to you before we go so you know they say april showers bring may flowers uh -huh. but do these solar um colors flares do they bring summer cicadas no a separate thing but we have to track it because we're the scientists <laughs> we got two broods, right we've got uh, the brood xii and brood xix so a, kind of a rare combo where we've got both of them showing up uh we have the cicada warning that was in place we put that out because look at this so these are the reports as of yesterday at lunch wow all those counties someone said yeah i've spotted cicadas and we've got a photo of that these are what they look like. Isn't that great? Heather would love this. I mean, it's kind of out of a horror film, I gotta say. They look like giant flies. They do. They're uh, pretty fascinating to see. <laughs> so if you get a photo report, we love to see those. I mean, that is some serious coverage on these trees. Yeah. That's they incredible. Really, look at all that. It's like, it looks like someone littered them. That's awesome. Well, keep your eyes open because they may pop up in your backyard and be all over you. So, you know, brush off your arms before you go inside. If you have a question for Jacob uh, for next week's Ask Your Meteorologist, there's a look at how you can connect with him on the screen.